And are the same antibiotics that doctors are prescribing us to fight diseases actually creating super diseases? A new study by the Center for Disease Control took a look at the emergence of antibiotic resistant bacteria and the effect it's having on Americans. The study found that every single year, 2 million Americans fall ill from antibiotic resistant bacteria and that 23,000 Americans die from this resistant bacteria. Again, every single year. There are a number of explanations for this uptick in deadly resistant bacteria, ranging from factory farming to overprescribing of antibiotics. And earlier, I spoke with Dr. Brad Spellberg from the Infectious Diseases Society of America, and I asked him about these CDC's numbers and just how serious of an issue this really is. Well, the numbers are actually low. Um, the, the CDC, in releasing the report, emphasized that they used very conservative calculations. And, of course, they had released numbers some, uh, you know, I'm going to say about five years ago that suggested the numbers are closer to 99,000 deaths from those types of infections. They tried to use a different, a little bit different methodology here. So the bottom line is it's a huge problem. People are dying of infections in some cases that we've completely run out of treatments for. They are pan-resistant to every available antibiotic. And how is this happening? I mean, how is it that we've found a way to cure this certain bacteria and now it's coming back and we can't? What is the mechanism at work here? Well, I think we need to remember that antibiotics were only discovered by people. They were actually invented by bacteria probably on the order of two billion years ago with a bee. And they've been using these weapons to kill each other for two billion years. And so they've created defense mechanisms, resistance mechanisms is what we call them, to defeat antibiotics. When we apply antibiotics to patients or to livestock or in agricultural settings, it kills off the susceptible bacteria and leaves behind the bacteria that are already resistant so that they can then grow and spread their resistance genes. Well, it's just interesting because a lot of these, these uh, bacteria, people contract this bacteria in hospitals. And we think of hospitals as these stark whitewashed places. But really, should we fear going to the doctor and actually fear what the doctor is prescribing us when he gives us these antibiotics for things like the common cold or something? Well, I, I would not say that we should fear going to the doctor. I do think people need to understand that the hospital is an inherently dangerous place. And it's not because hospitals are dirty or doctors are lazy or anything like that. Think about it this way. You're taking the sickest people in society, crowding them into one building, tearing new holes in their bodies that they didn't used to have by placing plastic catheters in their bloodstream, in their bladder, putting tubes down their, uh, into their lungs so that they can breathe for them. And we're using very large quantities of antibiotics to treat infections. So that's a perfect breeding ground to generate antibiotic-resistant bacteria. So the point is, you go into the hospital if you have to. You work carefully with your team to get out of the hospital as soon as you can. And I think patients should be empowered. For example, if, patient, if, if uh, healthcare providers enter their room and the patient doesn't see them wash their hands, the patient should say, hey, do you mind washing your hands? Everybody, you know, no, nobody's perfect, and patients should be empowered to remind providers to wash their hands. You know, even though, I mean, as you're saying here, that a lot of this uptick in people contracting antibiotic-resistant bacterial infections is a result of too many antibiotics being prescribed to begin with, that's still the prevailing way we do medicine in this country. Why is it? I mean, are, are, are doctors unaware of these risks? Do they not care about these risks? Why do you think we're still pursuing this? Okay, well, so the first point I'm going to make is you're now talking about the 20% of antibiotic use in this country, which goes into human beings. 80% of the antibiotics used in this country go into animals. The vast majority of that is to promote the growth of livestock so that it's cheaper to produce meat. So we're not even touching the 80% in this conversation. Okay. For the moment, let's stick with the 20%. I think the real, at the end of the day, what drives inappropriate antibiotic prescriptions is fear. It's fear of being wrong. It's fear of the unknown. It's fear of missing a bacterial infection. And if you think about it, if I'm encountering a single patient and I'm wrong about that patient, 
that there could be catastrophic consequences. The harm to society of one prescription is pretty small. It becomes huge when it becomes magnified millions of times over every year. So this is the phenomenon that has been, has been called in science the tragedy of the commons. Many people doing something that has a very small injurious effect to society when it's done once, but it's done so many times that it causes great harm, but that's hard to remember when you're facing one individual patient who's sitting in front of you. So now moving on then to this other 80% that you mentioned, which comes from this factory farming and pumping animals full of antibiotics that we eventually eat. How difficult is that to address, given the economic incentives there are in using this and given our, just our, our American diet that is pretty meat-heavy? Yeah. Well, you know, the bottom line is it can't be that difficult because Europe's already done it. Right? Europe has already shown that you can ban growth from emotional antibiotics and not only not experience harm to animals, but the, the country that did it first, Denmark, experienced a 600% increase in hog production after they banned growth promotional use of antibiotics. So, it, yes, is it hard? Yes, it's politically hard, but it's not scientifically hard. It's already been done. Very interesting. Dr. Brad Spellberg from the Infectious Diseases Society of America, thank you. You bet.